Now we're moving into the algebra section of the test, and this is going to be numbers 30 to 40. 30, solve for x. x over 4 plus negative 6 equals 5. All right, so let's move the 6 over to the other side. So we get x over 4 equals 11 times both sides by 4. We get x is 44. 31, 3 times the product of 4 in a number is equal to 11 less than that number. What is twice the number? Okay, so let's translate these words into an equation. 3 times the product of 4 in a number. So it's going to be 3 times the product of 4 in a number. So 4n is equal to 11 less than that number. So remember, be careful with the less than. So it's actually going to be n minus 11, not 11 minus n. So if you're having trouble with this, check out the translating words into algebra series of videos in both the bootcamp and the SAT tactics, SAT math tactics series. So this becomes 12n equals n minus 11. Subtract n from both sides, we get 11n equals negative 11, or n equals negative 1. Now, the question wants to know, though, what is twice the number? So we want to know 2n, and 2n is going to be equal to negative 2. So our answer is negative 2. Be careful about what they ask you for. Solve for all x, so we have this. So you might try to pull out an x and solve for this, but what you really need to do is actually bring the 6 over here. So we get x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0, and now we factor this as a quadratic. We go this, so x and x. We need two numbers that multiply out to negative 6 and add up to negative 5. So that's going to be mi minus 6 and plus 1, right? Negative 6 plus 1, negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Um, all right, so now we get x must equal 6 or negative 1 because this must equal 0. So either one of these roots, uh, either one of these factors can equal 0. So we get that when both 6, x is 6 or x is negative 1. So those are our answers for that one. Simplify this expression. Okay, so let's start doing some factoring. So this 6, we're going to leave alone. This 2, uh, x plus 4, let's factor out a 2. So this will become 2 times x plus 2. Now we're going to divide it by, so let's go ahead and remember when we divide by a fraction, we want to flip the fraction over. So let's do the factors of, well, let's just move this over here. Right? So this is times x minus 3 times x minus 3. We'll just separate those out. And now this guy, we can factor this quadratic. Two numbers that multiply out to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. So that's going to be x minus 3, x plus 2. So this. Now we just go ahead and cross out factors. Well, this 2 is going to get rid of this 6, make it a 3. This x plus 2 is going to cancel this. This x minus 3 is going to cancel that. So all we're left with in the end is 3 on top and x minus 3 on bottom. What is the greatest x that satisfies this equation? So for this one, we can just go ahead and start factoring things out because we have a cubed here and it's generally hard to solve cubics analytically. So let's actually just factor out a 3x out of these terms. This will become x squared minus 4. So this over here, x could equal 0 and that would work. But we could factor this to x plus 2, x minus 2, right? Difference of two perfect squares. So what are the answers we can get here? Well, we can get x is negative 2, or x is positive 2. So we want to know the greatest x that satisfies the equation. That'll be this one, x is 2. Factor completely. So we have these guys. These, whenever you see the difference of two perfect squares, remember the shortcut. So we need to have two factors that multiply out to this. Remember, the middle term is going to cancel. So we want to have a plus and a minus. This guy is just going to be 3a and 3a, because 3a times 3a is 9a squared. And here we need to square root this, so it's going to be 8 and 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. And then be careful here, we want it to be b cubed, because b cubed times b cubed adds up those exponents, becomes b to the 6. So here are your factors. Difference of two perfect squares. Very similar to the last one up here. Combine. Okay, well, let's combine these two first by our, our log rules. So x to the 3 times x to the 2, or sorry, not log rules, exponent rules, is going to become x to the 5 to the 4 over x to the 7. This is going to become x to the 20 over x to the 7, and now we subtract the exponents, and we're left with our final answer of x to the 11. Solving this one for x, well, remember, a negative exponent just means flip it to the bottom. This negative 1 only applies to the x, so the 6 is going to stay up top. So we're going to be left with 6 over x equals 12. Subtract 10 from both sides, we get 6x equals 2. Cross multiply, we get 2x is 6, or x is 3, which is your answer. Solve for x. Well, here we have an exponential equation, or I should say an exponent equation. So first, let's get these in terms of the same base. So 27 is the same thing as 3 to the 3. 
So this is 3 to the 3 times 3 to the 3x plus 1. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, so that's 3 squared to the 6. Now by our exponent rules, we can multiply the exponents. We're going to get 3 to the 9x plus 3 is equal to 3 to the 12. And now since the bases are equal, our exponents must equal each other. So we'll set those equal. We get 9x plus 3 equals 12. 9x is equal to 9, or x is equal to 1, which is your answer. Solve for x. Well, we, we want to get rid of the square root, but before we do that, before we can square both sides to get rid of the square root, let's make sure we just have a square root on the left. So we're going to move the 10 to the other side. We're going to get x plus 2 square rooted equals 10. Now we can go ahead and square both sides. This is going to be x plus 2. This will be 100. So finally, x is 98. What is the smallest value of x that satisfies this equation? Well, we've got an absolute value equation, so we've got two scenarios. Either 3x minus 3 could equal 15, or 3x minus 3 could equal negative 15, right? Because if this becomes negative 15, the absolute value bars will make it positive, which will then satisfy the overall equation. So we're going to solve for both of these. Here we're going to get 3x equals 18, or x is 6. Here we're going to get 3x equals negative 12 or x is negative 4. Now we've got two answers, but the question wants to know the smallest value of x. So that's going to be the negative 4, because of course that's negative, and smaller than the uh, other answer.